Good evening. My name is Kobe Little, and I'm we one of those that. students that um, is advocating some addressment of the curriculum at the school. And the point is not that there are some righteous cultures that aren't being discussed. The point is that there are cultures and histories that aren't being discussed. I'm sorry. Uh, you said you're advocating what? Okay. Some examination of the curriculum at this school um, in terms of the inclusion of um, other areas of study. And never was the point that there was a righteous group and that Western culture was not righteous, but that there was some need for discussion of it. I think that one of the problems with this discussion here is that there has really only been half the panel dealing with reality. Um, some reality is that legislation has been passed uh, ending segregation, but if you look at Baltimore, it's still very segregated. If you look at New York schools, they're very segregated. If you look at the housing thing in Texas, it's very segregated. Uh, you said there's change in white attitudes. There's some change, but how many white people here would have a black dentist? How many white people here would vote for a black person over a white person? These are all studies that have been done. You can look at Newsweek or anywhere else you want to look, and they're there. Nobody's dealing with the fundamental... I'm going to ask you to get to a question okay. or let the panelists comment on your the question is The question is that I want people to deal with is that we've liked to quote Martin Luther King and say that we had the Civil Rights Movement. And that's the problem. We did have the Civil Rights Movement. But why aren't you all dealing with the fundamental questions that Martin Luther King posed? And those are two points. Number one, he said that for any real progress to be accomplished, white America must realize that there must be a restructuring of American society, one. And two, he said that America wrote African Americans or black people in this country a check, and that check retur returned marked insufficient funds. Okay, that's criminal in itself that there... Th that okay. Let, let the okay, well, address the question point. then, the question is, is that you're not dealing with the in economic inequalities, and there's no discussion of reparations for black people, and until you deal with these issues, then there really can be no fundamental changes. Thank you. Well, let's, um, let's discuss these realities. Now, when W.E.B. Du Bois wrote in the early part of the century, the equation of black and poor was a virtually complete one. In other words, it would be accurate to say that virtually all blacks in this country were very poor. And affirmative action, I think, was implemented because people realize there are serious problems that are both racial and class-oriented, and these need to be dealt with. The fact is today, the black community, as Linda Chavez said, is segmented. You have a substantial black middle class, and you have some people who are in the upper middle class or the affluent. We now have to reappraise affirmative action in the light of that fact. Why is it fair to give the son or daughter of Jesse Jackson, who went to private schools in the Washington, D.C. area, a preference to get into Johns Hopkins over the son or daughter of an Appalachian coal miner, the son of a Hispanic doctor, a black engineer. These are middle class people. They go to the same schools with middle class white kids. Very often there is no reason in a society of scarce resources to apply affirmative action in this way. Now, you, you referred earlier to the question of the ghetto. And whenever we, look, whenever we see oppression, we have to ask, whom does it benefit? Whom does it benefit? Why do we have slavery in this country? Because it benefited people. There was work to do, and there were people who gained from it. Who does the ghetto benefit? Think about it. Does the ghetto benefit whites? How? Crime? Uh, dangers? Ex expending? No. The ghetto, the existence, the persistence of the ghetto benefits an activist class of researchers, professors, social workers. <laughs> a... <laughs> if... If racism were to be abolished overnight, many of these people would be out of a job. That's about one minute in there. <laughs>